So uh, the next speaker of the afternoon session is uh, Thomas Lam, and he will talk about positive and cluster configuration spaces. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Yara. And uh, I'd like to thank all the organizers uh, for inviting me to speak and, and Anastasia for organizing this uh, Zoomplitude. It's a pleasure to speak at Amplitudes. Um, I've been finding ideas from Amplitudes fascinating um, in the last few years, and I've thought about things uh, um, from a math perspective, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun for me. Um, uh, so the work I'm, I'm talking about is joint with Nima, Mark, Song, and Hugh uh, in the collection of papers here. Um, and I want to talk about um, two kinds of uh, configuration spaces. So let me start by saying what configuration space is. So um, configuration space, uh, by that I mean um, collections of n distinct labeled points in a projective space. Um, so I'll, I'll label that conf kn, and there's a shift in the index uh, sort of to, to match how we label Grassmannians. Um, and uh, so the space uh, to write down what it is, it's not, it's not that hard to write down what it is. Um, uh, we have, we, we take a collection of points uh, they're called Z1 up to Zn um, inside a projective space. I ask that they're distinct, they're labeled, so they're labeled one up to N. And then um, I have to mod out by uh, the uh, group of projective transformations. Um, one way to mod that out, uh, which I think everyone is familiar with, is you can move three of the points to your three favorite points. And that will, that will remove the group PGLK. Sorry, uh, PGL2 in the case K plus two. Otherwise, you have to you have to move uh, uh, you have to move um, uh, K uh, K of the points into your favorite location. Um, oh, sorry, K plus one. Uh, and so, just a just purely a math question um, uh, faced with this is that is how do we compactify the space? So, so the way it's the points are distinct and uh, what happened when the points collide? And so I, I want to present, I, I want to present a perspective on this. Um, and so I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with uh, a case where the answer is sort of, there's one nice answer and, and it's universally agreed this is the right way to compactify the space. So we're going to take uh, the configura spa configuration space of um, n points in P1. Um, and that's, that's M0n. Um, this, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to allow, so, so you can put this either as a complex uh, manifold or as a real manifold. So when I write R, this, it's just a real manifold. So then uh, what you have to do is you have to take N distinct points um, on P1. One uh, real projective space is just S1. So it's, you have N, N label points that are distinct on a circle. Um, and um, this space is this space is open. Um, so you, if you go off to infinity, there's no not necessarily a limit. Um, and it's got many uh, it's got many uh, connected components. Um, so you can't by continuously moving the point, you can't change the cyclic ordering. Well, you can't change the cyclic ordering of the points. So one of the connected components would be if all the um, uh, uh, all the all the label points are in order in cyclic order. So that's one of the connected components of this manifold, and uh, I'll call that the positive component. And then there's a well understood compactification of the space uh, studied uh, um, by mathematicians uh, like Knudsen, Mumford, Deline, and many others. And uh, I, I'm not going to define it sort of carefully, but I'm going to draw a picture of what a typical point in this uh, space looks like. So. Uh, in the interior, in the interior of the space, it, we, it contains this guy. Um, but when the points collide, what happens is that they bubble off, and the kind of bubbling off looks something like this. So, so in this picture, this guy is a P1, this guy is a P1, and this guy is a P1. So they 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 are three circles. They um, and uh, and there's a configuration of three points here. There's a configuration of five points here, and configuration of three points here, and they're glued together as a tree. So, um, so that's, this, is, this is sort of a, a cartoon of um, what this space, um, what this uh, M0N bar looks like. And um, uh, the boundary components, uh, the boundary components uh, can be indexed by trees with N leaves. Uh, and this, so here's, here's a tree with N leaves. The N leaves are labeled by the same labels as the, as the points. 
uh, what one thing that one can do is one can take this positive component and take its closure inside inside M0 and and you get sort of non-negative non-negative configuration space and the boundary components that you see there they're only labeled by planar trees so you only, if you're sitting in the um, if you're sitting in the positive component and you take a limit the only kind of limits you see are sort of planar kind of degeneration okay, okay so i'm going to um move to something that's more familiar to you guys than to me um, uh, open string uh, amplitude um, so that's this integral uh, over um, over this positive component split into two parts there's there's a form which i won't say much which i won't talk much about and i'm going to focus on what i believe is called the cova nielsen factor which is um some uh rational function on m0 n and uh and uh right so this is only well defined so this integral this integrand is only well defined if these guys this mendel um, variables they satisfy uh, momentum conservation um and uh, so string theorists have known for a long time that this is sort of the right, uh, the right way to write an integral, um, uh, sort of an open string integral um, over the um, moduli space of um, uh, M0n. Um, uh, and uh, what I would like to draw your attention to is that this, uh, this integral does not in itself know about the compactification. It doesn't uh, inherently know about M0n bar because I mean, it, I mean, in particular, I, don't, I can throw away any sort of measure zero stuff, but I'm just integrating over this positive part. Um, uh, the boundary of it, it doesn't immediately see, um, uh, but we know that it is related to the um, to the m zero n bar, and one reason it's related to m zero n bar is that, um, and that's sort of also the reason why we know this is the right string amplitude is that the factorization, the factorization of this, uh, so this. Uh, integral has some factorization properties and it matches the way um the way uh trees break up so you take a you take a you take a tree and you cut an edge um and it breaks up into smaller pieces and this uh this combinatorics is um is uh, uh there in both m0 and bar and also in this integral okay um okay so so uh one question that i'd like to talk about um so the, the main thing that i want to talk about um today is um why why did we end up why did we end up with the combinatorial of um planar trees and, and trees and not some other kind of compactification so as i said in in configuration so with m0 and we have a universally agreed correct way to uh, compactify and one of the things that we're trying to do is to look for compactifications outside this uh m0 n case and um and and the, the, the way I'm going to suggest to do it is that we write down an integral. Okay, so how does this integral know about the boundaries? Um, uh, so, uh, so one thing that's, uh, one answer um, that's presented, uh, um, uh, Song already talked about it this morning, I think, I think Nima talked about it last week, is, is to use a positive parameterization. It turns out that it's possible to rewrite the string integral in the following way. So there's some there's some D log for is an integral over a positive orthant. Uh, there's a D log form, and then there's a bunch of Laurent polynomials which turn out to only have positive coefficients. Um, uh, and it turns out that uh, from so from this collection of Laurent polynomials, we can do a combinatorial game. And because Song already talked about it, I'm going to be very brief here. Um, what you do is you take the Newton polytopes of these uh, Laurent polynomials, which is the polytope whose vertices are given by the um, exponent vectors of the monomials. And then you take its Minkowski sum and you end up getting a, a well-studied polytope called the associahedron. And this associahedron uh, um, has, has faces that are um, in bijection with planar trees with n leaves. Um, so uh, let, let me, let me say that uh, in particular, this integral, this integral doesn't actually know the whole of M0 n bar. It only knows the part of M0 n bar that's touching the positive component, which is the non-negative, the non-negative part of M0 n, um, the part that I call M0 n greater than or equal to zero. So that's, those are the planar trees. So, so this, this guy only knows the planar stuff, not all the stuff. Um, and uh, the slogan is that this integral is the, uh, is the stringy canonical form of the polytope. Um, and it can be made precise, um, uh, uh, and, and, and Song already talked about this. Um, 
but so uh, my collaborators like to talk about um, the part of this this part of the story. So I want to I want to focus on a different one, um, uh, which is that this this polytope lives in flat space. So this this polytope P, which is the Minkowski sum of a bunch of Newton polytopes. It's just a, an honest Euclidean polytope. You can make it, uh, you can make, put it into projective space if you want, but it's just an honest polytope and it, it's not curved at all. So, I'm gonna, so, so what I want to talk about is a slightly different um, way of thinking about things. Um, uh, so let's try to explore this integral in the region that it converges. And I'm going to, I'm going to look at this integral and I'm, I'm going to sort of assume that this part of the integral doesn't change. And over here, this Tober Newson factor uh, is just some, I'm going to uh, investigate what kind of M's I'm allowed to put there. And the kind of M's that I'm, I'm going to put are these, uh, is this kind of uh, mon uh, Laurent monomial in Zi minus Zj. So Zi minus Zj to some powers. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to ask, what kind of M's can I put so that this integral, um, this integral converges? Um, and, and here's a definition. Um, uh, this, this monomial M nearly converges if it is in the limit of integrands that do converge. Um, uh, so I, 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 it's a little bit clumsy to say nearly converges instead of converges and saying limit. Um, and that's because I want something closed. I want, a, I want the condition to be sort of have, um, to be closed in some way. Okay. So, so some, some integrands will make this uh, row converge and some of them won't. Um, okay, so, so let me uh, just say kind of very quickly that um, there, is, there is a condition um, that one can prove for near convergence. And, um, and uh, I've, I've given an example of how, how to check whether something converges or not just, um, this is the five point open string amplitude written in positive coordinates. And what I do is I take the part that I call M, which is just a, uh, which is just a, um, it's just a function though, though, though I like it may not be a rational function because the A, Bs might just be real numbers I'm thinking. And then I can apply to this, I can formally apply to this, uh, the tropicalization procedure, which takes this expression and applies this collection of uh, sort of symbol changes to it. So this, this product, uh, this product of factors turns into this function. Um, alpha prime doesn't matter because it's some small real number. I change little x into capital X when I do tropicalization and I get the following function. So A, the A, B, C's are all um, real numbers that are fixed, let's say. And capital X and capital Y are vary over uh, uh, two dimensional space. So vary over R2. And I'm, and the, the question that um, I want to ask is whether this function, this piecewise linear function, whether it's uh, non-negative. And if it is, then uh, it's, it's non-negative um, everywhere if and only if this, uh, M, this M nearly converges. And you can translate this in a collection of uh, inequalities in the five parameters, A, B, C1, C2, C3. Um, one consequence of this, which um, may not have been obvious from the integral is that, um, uh, is that uh, the, the M's that the M's that nearly converge form a semigroup. So if you have two monomials that nearly converge, then the product also nearly converges. So if you have two monomials that um, nearly converges, you you can you can multiply them as inside the integrand, and the integral will converge. Okay. So here's the definition um, of of the sort of uh, that that's um, that comes from uh, this this notion. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take the following, uh, um, which is the ring by all monomials that are rational and nearly convergent. So I think I should explain this a bit, and there'll be there'll be an example in a moment. Um, uh, so so what what do I mean by ring? I mean I will I will take the smallest collection of um, rational functions, so polynomials divided by polynomials that's closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but importantly not closed under division. So um, this guy, whatever it is, is closed under addition multiplication, multiplication by scalars, and also by, uh, by also subtraction. Um, and it can all the nearly convergent monomials. And then, and then I'm going to define a compactification um, sort of synthetically. So I'm, I'm assuming I don't know what M0 and bar is. So I'm, I'm pretending I did not know M0 and bar. And all I was given was the string M0. 
So you gave me this integral and want to, I want to find what this compactification is. So I ask for integrands that converge. I, I chuck them in huge space of functions. So this is some, some functions belong to here and some don't. And then there's, a, there's something called taking the spec, which is uh, taking the spectrum, which let me just give the sort of very uh, vague notion of what, what this is. Yes, it's the biggest possible space such that um, every such M does not blow up. So you, if you give me a huge collection of functions, I'm going to make a space out, out of a collection of functions. And the way I'm going to think about it is this is, uh, is the biggest possible, possible space so that all my functions can be evaluated at every point. Okay, so every function inside this ring, so every nearly convergent monomial has to be evaluatable here. And it turns out that, um, and it, it turns out that if you do this for the string amplitude, you will find a space which is not M0 N bar, um, but it sits somewhere, this guy will sit somewhere between M0 N and M0 N bar, uh, is denoted M0 N tilde, and it's a partial compactification. So it's the, it's the guy that doesn't contain all trees with N leaves, but the guy that contains only planar trees with N leaves. So, so let me do, do an example with this, uh, the um, beta function. So this beta function, which is the uh, four point uh, open string amplitude, um, converges under these conditions. So the exponents, uh, so this, this is the form and, and I'm just focusing my attention on this part. And it converges if the, these exponents are positive. Um, uh, so, uh, so what, what is, uh, so what are the nearly convergent, uh, what are the nearly convergent monomials? So you can have any y to a positive power times one minus y to a, sorry, y to a non-negative power times one minus y to a non-negative power. And it turns out the, the corresponding ring, uh, you just get all polynomials in y. So if you then allow multiplication and addition and subtraction, you get all polynomials in y. And it's important that uh, you don't allow one over y. So if you took s to be negative or t to be negative, you allow one over y or one over one, one minus y. And I'm not allowing that. Um, and uh, uh, if you ask what, are, um, what, what part of, uh, um, what is the spectrum of this ring, then you end up getting just the, just the, complex, just the complex line, a one dimensional space. And importantly, you don't get infinity. So you don't get P1, which would be M0 N bar. You get, um, sorry, M04 bar. You get, uh, you get just C. Um, and the reason is Y will blow up at in infinity. So, so it's P1 minus one point. Now, let me contrast with what happens if you just allow all the possible integrands and you forget the convergence condition, then you, you produce this ring, which is, um, I'm going to take the ring uh, and I'll have y in it, I have one minus one, but, but I'll also have one over y and one minus y. And when you take the spec of this, what happens is you get p1 minus zero, one and infinity. And the reason is that this, uh, this function will blow up at y equals zero. This function will blow up at uh, y equals one. This, this function y will blow up at infinity. So, so I, I'm looking for the biggest space that, so that no, none of these functions blow up. And, uh, and I end up removing three points. So, so, uh, so I end up getting um, inside, uh, so inside M04 bar, which is P1, um, sits this part, which is this partial compactification. And this part is the part that my, um, uh, my string amplitude was defined on. Okay. So, um, okay. So, so uh, the, 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 sum the, the summary here, the summary here, if this was uh, too quick, is just that from an integral, from an integral where I allow my grand to vary and I ask which integrands converge and which don't, I can synthetically produce a space. And this space offers a, a sort of a, a compactification um, that is, uh, um, uh, uh, that, is, that, is, that doesn't require some external information. So I didn't need to know about M0 and bar to begin with, all I needed to know was the integral. Okay. Um, and, and so I said there were two answers. There was answer one and answer two, and they kind of gave the same combinatorics. Answer, answer one was I take this uh, Minkowski sum of Newton polytopes, and I got a polytope living in just flat space. And then answer two was, um, answer two was I take, took this, uh, uh, I, I defined a space of functions using, um, using which integrands converge and which don't. Um, and the relationship between these two is, uh, are given by the CHY uh, scattering equations. Okay, so the two answers are not unrelated. Um, 
this guy here, they have the same combinatorics. The, the boundary is labeled by planar trees. Um, the, uh, the, the guy who's flat is just polytope. This guy, this guy is sitting inside M0 and bar, and um, it's not um, uh, it's in some way. And, um, uh, uh, and, uh, and there's a map from this sort of curved, so it's got the same combinatorics. It's curved in some way, and there's a map from this curved associate hedron to this flat associate hedron given by this, the scattering equations. Okay, so uh, let's see. I think I have maybe five more minutes. So. Yeah, three minutes, yeah. Three minutes, okay. So you can apply these to, so you can apply this philosophy to a number of different situations. So there's the, um, uh, there's a cluster string integral, which uh, Song already talked about, so I won't say much about, but there, you end up getting something called the cluster configuration space. And I think that Nima will talk about this issue that um, uh, in the cluster string integral, you take product over all cluster variables, but the problem is most cluster algebras have infinitely many cluster variables. So, so, that, so how do you make sense of this integral where there's infinitely many? Um, but for finite type cases, you get a lot of nice spaces. Um, and then there's the Grassmannian string integral, which is related to a lot. Uh, we've had to also, um, this is an incomplete collection of works. So in the alpha prime going to zero limit, it goes to this generalized by adjoint uh, scalar amplitude um, uh, of these. Um, uh, and so, uh, so on the one hand, you can get a polytope by taking this Minkowski cell and it, it recovers things that people have talked about today. But what I want to advertise you is you actually also get a space and this space is curved and it's called positive configuration space. Um, and in the Grassmannian, in the Grassmannian case, you, you take a Grassmannian and you just sort of as integrand, you put all the Pluca coordinates. Um, there, there's a, so you have to mod out by torus as a technical condition. Um, so let me flash uh, a theorem about the positive configuration space. So, so as I said, the definition of this thing is, uh, can be, so it turns out that there's another definition of this positive configuration space. So another one, um, uh, but uh, th th this configuration space can be defined in the synthetic way that I just explained, which is to just stay at this integral and ask when does it converge? And you can synthetically produce this space. Okay, so I'll flash a theorem. Um, this is, uh, the first theorem is, um, so the, uh, a variant of a result about the positive Grassmannian that I proved with uh, Galashian and Kapp, which is that this space is uh, homeomorphic to a polytope. Um, so in particular, it's, it's a bore. And the second theorem is about the combinatorics of it. And, and here's an incomplete list of people who've worked on various parts of this problem. So it's related to subdivisions of the hypersyntax and depository polytopes, Grassmannian, the positive draft, which means positive tropical uh, vectors. And, and today we already heard about this in Freddie's talk, Lauren's talk, uh, James's talk, and, and I didn't have time to Alfredo's talk. Um, uh, uh, let, me not, let, me, let me go straight past. Um, and uh, the, uh, where, so, so in, in the M0N case, we have this bubbling picture of a bunch of, when, when two things collide, they bubble out into little circles. Here's kind of a cartoon of what happens in um, in positive configuration space for k is equal to three. Um, you, you also have some bubbles and in each bubble, in each bubble, so this, this is its P2, this is another P2, and this is another P2. And in each bu bubble, there's a point configuration. Um, it turns out that unlike uh, M0 n bar, you can't arbitrarily, like there's some combinatorics associated with this configuration, but there are also some continuous parameters. And it turns out not every choice of continuous parameters here gets matched with every choice here and so on. So there's some, there's some subtlety in here, which is harder than the M0 n bar case. Um, but anyway, this, this is the kind of, uh, there is a kind of bubbling picture to, to points in the positive configuration space. Um, so let me compare the, let me just end by comparing the cluster and the Grassmannian string integrals. Um, the cluster case is nice because this polytope uh, is simple, while the Grassmannian case, the polytope is not simple. And a uh, uh, geometric manifestation of this is the cluster configuration space is smooth with normal crossings, but that's not true for positive configuration space. So in the algebraic geometric sense, the geometry is much harder. Um, uh, uh, the, the cluster case has a particularly nice set of uh, variables called U variables. These are the generators of, those are the minimal things that give convergent, nearly convergent integrals. So, 
So um, if I ask what monomials can I put to, to make it uh, convergent, there are some minimal things that can make the integral converge, uh, nearly convergent, and those are called U variables. Um, and the number of U variables is the uh, number of cluster variables in the cluster case. Um, but in the Grassmannian case, the number of U variables is, uh, is, greater, is typically greater than number of uh, Pucker variables. So in that case, it's not as nice. In, uh, Song already talked about that the U variable satisfies some particularly nice equations that have a cluster theoretic meaning. Um, in the Grassmannian case, we don't know what. We don't know what the analog of this equation is. So here's a question mark. Um, uh, but the Grassmannian case has the advantage that we can define it um, because it's more uh, um, obviously finite uh, than the um, infinite cluster algebras that come up in Grassmannian. So if we use the cluster string integral, we encounter some uh, the problems of infinitely many uh, cluster variables. Um, so, so to deal with this, we use the Grassmannian string integral, which has some, uh, it's not as nice in some way. Okay. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Thomas, for a great talk. And are there any questions? Uh, Yorgos has a question. Yeah, that is a very nice talk. Thanks. Uh, well, it goes back to, I guess, the questions I was also asking uh, Song. So what dictates the particular choice of, uh, of the integrand? Uh, so uh, let's say for the Grassmannian string integral, you, you chose the Plucker coordinates. But as we also heard from James talk, uh, why not choose a subset? Why not uh, also add more uh, uh, as another subset of... Uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, e e excellent question. Um, from these the are all compactifications, right? These are all equally, democratically speaking, yes, equally valid, no? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so from the mathematical perspective, this, uh, this construction works for um, uh, any... Uh, yeah, you can write any integrand with some reasonable properties. Uh, um, uh, most of the theorems work. I think you, you need some physics to uh, dictate. You need some fix physics to dictate what integrand to put. And um, uh, in, the, in the string amplitude case, I, my understanding is that the physics that dictated uh, the choice is that you find out that the integral you wrote down has the correct, um, I mean, so, so string theory told us it should be some kind of integral on M0n. And um, what made this integrand particularly nice was that it had all the factorization properties that you expected from physical reasons. And so I, I, th I think that that's sort of um, the hint one would have. But, um, and uh, I think Mark will uh, hopefully talk, uh, talk more about uh, uh, our motivations when it comes to uh, super young meals, um, where there's a different set of intuition for which integrand to take. But yeah, that's a very good question. And I, I don't know which integrands are nice and which are, um, yeah. So there is a question on the chat from uh, Jim Stashev about the picture of the curve associated hedron. Or do you want to elaborate more, Jim? Jim, do you want to speak to ask the question? Okay. Unmute myself. Can you hear ah, okay. me? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the original sociohedra were, in fact, curved for totally different reasons. So I'm curious to know, even for the uh, pentagonal one, which faces are curved? Right, so, um, so, so, so the, the, pentagon, the pentagonal associohedron um, in this context is defined as you take one connected component of M05, right. um, M05R, and, uh, and you take its closure in M05 bar. Right. Um, and that, that will have the combinatorics of a pentagon. So th that would be the definition. Yes, the question is, what does it look like? A picture. Oh, what does it look like in the picture? Okay, um, it's a little bit uh, uh, it's a little bit hard to draw it because um, so yeah. Sure. No, if it, if it's available uh, somewhere, that's good enough. Uh, so right. So so the way the way one would draw it is 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 you take this 
um, so M05 is the complement of other lines. Right. And this is the positive component. So it looks like a triangle. And what you have to do is you have to blow up. You have to blow yep. up two of the points. As usual. Now, where's the curve? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so the, the, the Pentagon in question is this. Yeah, I see. And it's got, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's I think there's some pictures by Devidas that. Uh, yes. Look. So, yeah, in the M0, uh, this curved association is sort of has been studied uh, yeah, by Devidas um, and right. others as well. Yeah. yeah. But Devidas has beautiful pictures. Okay, fine. Similarly, are there any pictures of your low dimensional uh, tilde CHs? Uh, oh, uh, so, so when we go to the um, uh, P2 case, um, uh, I, I, don't know, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to draw pictures. Of fine. Them. I, I was just curious. The, the, the geometry of that space is, is known to be sort of quite a bit more complicated than the M0 ends. Fine. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. Uh, are there any more questions? Okay, there are some questions in chat. Uh, perhaps if you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the questions. Uh, uh, or, or I, I could read them out if that's... Or you can read them out. Yeah. I, I, I just yeah, got access to chat. So uh, I think the question is, cluster configuration spaces have been defined by means of polynomial equations and yes that's that's correct so the um the cluster configuration space is it's an affine variety so it's spec of a ring and and we know the equations the equations are are these guys uh, so so what is the notation so there's one u gamma per um cluster variable so gamma is indexed as a cluster variable and this is called the compatibility degree and the number of equations is also, um, so it's the, you take the ring generated by all the, all the so cluster variables and you mod out by the ideal generated by these relations. And there's one relation per cluster variable. Yeah. And so that was question one. And question two was, are you aware of a geometric or modular description of these spaces? Um, so, okay, so for the cluster case, uh, in uh, in so for the exceptional types, I do not know any modular description. For for type so type C has a modular description of configurations of points which are um, uh, on on the circle which are um, uh, which are um, symmetric around the origin. Um, so so sort of mirror not not mirror symmetric um, central centrally symmetric configurations of points on a on a circle. Um, so that's the type C cluster configuration space. We have an explicit description of type B, but it's um, I'm not sure if it's modular um, in the usual sense. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so type B and type D, they are, they are, sort, of dis they are sort of descriptions, um, but, but there's nothing quite as clean as type A or type C. So, so type A is sort of configurations of points and type C is sort of configuration of um, Mirror symmetric points, and for for the Grassmannian case, uh, for the Grassmannian case, uh, there's another. I, I didn't give the definition. There's another uh, description of points in that space, and that corresponds to um, arrangements of toric varieties in the um, in uh, inside the Grassmannian. Um, so these toric varieties, they um, uh, they touch each other, so so they intersect. So it, it's something called a broken toric variety. So this uh, this this Chur tilde, there's a modular description of Chur tilde Kn as uh, certain broken toric varieties inside the Grassmannian. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Okay, are there any follow-ups? Or yeah, please feel free, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask uh, more. Okay, any more question? Okay, I see one more from Gang Chen. Yeah, please unmute yourself. Okay, I Yes, a general method to classify the convergent integral for general multiplicity. Uh, what do you mean by multiplicity? Uh, uh, for general, po a high, uh, general point of amplitude. 
Um, you, you you mean just uh, uh, tree level straight tree level open string amplitudes, yeah. but endpoint? point? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we we know the the convergence domain um, of the integral as written is is an associohedron mm -hmm. in in kinematic space in in the space of Mendelssohn invariant. I'm not sure I understood the question, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah thanks, thanks. Okay, uh, I think our time is up. So thank you very much, Thomas, for a great talk. Thank you, Yara. Yeah.